Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 14.8 logarithms and nonlinear data. 14.8 represents chapter 14, section 8 of the Pearson A level maths, Field Maths Year 1 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at two different cases. In case one, I'm going to be taking a polynomial and I'm going to be transforming it into a linear. In case two, I'm going to be taking an exponential and I'm going to be transforming it into a linear. Okay, so let's look at case number one. We've got y equal ax to the power n, where a and n are constants. How do I take this and transform it into a linear? Well, what I can do is apply logs on both sides as my starting point. So I've got log y equal log ax to the power n. Over here, I've got a product of two terms, a and x to the power n. I can use the multiplication rule for logs to split this log. So I've got log y equal log a plus log x to the power n. Now I can bring down the power using the power rule for logs. So I've got log y equal log a plus n log x. I'm going to rewrite the equation as log y equal n log x plus log a. Now in this equation, the variable is log y and log x. These are my variables. So I'm going to call the log y capital Y and I'm going to call the log x capital X. So now what I've got is y equal m x plus c. Ladies and gents, the gradient m is equal to n and the y-intercept c is equal to log a. Let's move on to case two. So now we're going to take the exponential function y equal a b to the power x where a and b are constants and we're going to transform it into a linear. So as my first step, like I did in case number one, I need to apply logs on both sides. So I've got log y equal log a b to the power x. Now over here we've got a product of two terms, a and b to the power x. So we can use the multiplication rule for logs to split this log into two parts. So we've got log y equal log a plus log b to the power x. Now I can bring down the power using the power rule for logs. So the next step is to use the power rule for logs to bring down the power. So we've got log y is equal log a plus x log b. Now I'm going to rewrite the equation as log y equal x log b plus log a. Now in this equation the variable is log y and uh, x. So I'm going to call the log y capital Y and I'm going to call the x capital X. So my equation can be written as y equal um, m x plus c. So in this scenario the gradient m is equal to log b, the coefficient of x. And the y-intercept c is equal to log a. Ladies and gents, that was the two different cases for which we've taken a non-linear function and we've transformed it into a linear function by applying logs on both sides and then using rules for logs. Let's have a look at exam style question one. The value of a rare painting b pound is modelled by the equation b equal pq to the power t where P and Q are constants and T is the number of years since the value of the painting was first recorded on 1st January 1980. The line L shown in figure 3 illustrates the linear relationship between T and log base 10 of V since 1st January 1980. The equation of line L is log base 10 of V equals 0.05 T plus 4.8. Part A, find to four significant figures, the value of P and the value of Q. Ladies and gents, I'm going to start off by writing this equation. So I've got a logarithmic equation, which is log base 10 of V equal 0.05T plus 4.8. I'm going to convert this logarithmic equation into a power equation. I'm going to rewrite it in the form V equal PQ to the power T in order to read off the constants P and Q. So the base of the logarithm is 10. I can raise it to the power 0.05t plus 4.8 and then I can set it equal to what I have inside the logarithm so that is v. 
So we've got V is equal 10 to the power 0 0.05T plus 4.8. Now using laws of indices, I can split this. So I've got V equal 10 to the power 0 0.05T multiplied by 10 to the power 4.8. Again, I'm going to rewrite this so that it looks something like this. V equal PQ to the power T. So if I manipulate, I can write the following. V equal 10 to the power 4.8 in bracket. Then we've got in bracket 10 to the power 0 0.05. And the outside power is T. If I multiply these two, I end up with 10 to the power 0 0.05 T. Now from here, I can see that the P is going to equal 10 to the power 4.8. So we have P is equal 10 to the power 4.8 which is equal to 63,100 to four significant figures. Okay, so my Q is going to equal 10 to the power 0 0.05. Okay, that is my Q. So Q is equal 10 to the power 0 0.05. This will equal 1.122 to four significant figures. Therefore, to four significant figures, my model is V equal Okay, so V equal 63,100 multiplied by 1.122 to the power T. That is my model. Let's move on to part B of exam style question one. With reference to the model, we need to give an interpretation of the value of P, which is 63,100, and the value of Q, which is 1.122. Let's start with part one. Now to understand this, I'm going to substitute t equals zero into the model for v. So I get v equals 63,100 multiplied by 1.122 to the power zero. This gives me 63,100, which is precisely my p value. Now, what is an interpretation for p? Well, the interpretation for p is the value of the painting on 1st Jan 1980, or you could say the initial value of the painting. Let's move on to part two. Okay, now we need to give an interpretation of the value of Q, which is 1.122. Now to see this, I'm going to substitute T equals zero into my model for V. I get V equal 63,100. If I substitute T equal one, I get V equals 63,100 multiplied by 1.122. If I substitute T equal two, I get V equals 63,100 multiplied by 1.122 to the power two. So each time what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by 1.122. Or you could say my Q value. So what is the interpretation for Q? Okay, so Q equal 1.122 represents the rate of increase in the value V of the painting per unit increase in the time t. Okay, so that is the interpretation for q. Let's have a look at part c of exam style question one. Find the value of the painting as predicted by the model on 1st January 2010, giving your answer to the nearest 100,000 pounds. The model begins on 1st January 1980. So going from 1st January 1980 to 1st January 2010, we're looking at 30 years. So we need to substitute t equal 30 into the model for v. So I've got v equal 63,100 multiplied by 1.122 to the power 30. If I put this into my calculator and I round to the nearest 100,000 pounds, I get 2 million pounds. So 2 million pounds. Okay, this is to the nearest 100,000 
pounds. Okay, so that there completes exam style question one. Let's have a look at exam style question two. A town's population P is modelled by the equation P equal AB to the power T, where A and B are constants and T is the number of years since the population was first recorded. The line L shown in figure 2 illustrates the linear relationship between T and log base 10 of P for the population over a period of 100 years. The line L meets the vertical axis as 0, 5, as shown. The gradient of L is 1 over 200. Part A, write down the equation for L. So let's have a look at part A. Now the equation of a straight line is of the form y equal mx plus c. Now over here the vertical axis is log base 10 of p. So the y is log base 10 of p equal. The m, the gradient is 1 over 200. The x, okay, over here the horizontal axis is t, so the x is t. Plus the y-intercept, c, which is 5. That there, ladies and gents, is the equation for L. Let's move on to part B. Find the value of A and the value of B. I'm going to start off with this logarithmic equation. So I've got log base 10 of P is equal 1 over 200 T plus 5. I want to rewrite this logarithmic equation as a power equation. Namely, I want to rewrite it in the form P equal AB to the power T. So the base of the logarithm is 10. I can raise it to the power 1 over 200 t plus 5, setting it equal to what I have inside the logarithm, which is p. So I've got p equal 10 to the power 1 over 200 t plus 5. I can now split this into two parts, giving me p equal 10 to the power 1 over 200 t multiplied by 10 to the power 5. I can do further manipulation until I arrive at this particular form. So I've got P equal in bracket 10 to the power 5 multiplied by in bracket 10 to the power 1 over 200. The outside power is T. This here is the same as 10 to the power 1 over 200 T using laws of indices. So from here I can read off my A and my B. So the A is 10 to the power 5 which is 100,000 and the B is 10 to the power 1 over 200. I can keep my answers in exact form. Well, of course, A is going to be in exact form, but namely B I can keep in exact form because in part B of the question, it does not say round your answer. Okay, so that there is my model for the population P. Let's move on. Now we've got part C with reference to the model, given interpretation of part one, the value of the constant A. So A is 10 to the power five. If I substitute T equals zero, I get P equal 10 to the power five multiplied by 10 to the power one over 200 to the power zero. This gives me P equal 10 to the power five, which is precisely my A value. So what is the interpretation for A? Well, A is the initial population, okay? So A is the initial population. Let's move on to part two. So we want to give an interpretation of the value B, the constant B. So that B is 10 to the power one over 200. Now to see this, I can substitute T equals zero. This gives me P equal 10 to the power five, then I can substitute t equal 1. This gives me p equal 10 to the power 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 1 over 200. Then if I substitute t equal 2, I get p equal 10 to the power 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 1 over 200 to the power 2. So each time I am multiplying by 10 to the power 1 over 200, which is precisely my b value. So what is the interpretation for B? Well, it is the rate of increase in the population P per unit increase in the time T. 
Moving on to part D of exam style question two. State two reasons why this may not be a realistic population model. Okay, so we have part D, reason number one. The model predicts unlimited population growth, which is unrealistic. The model predicts unlimited population growth. Unrealistic. Okay, reason number two. 100 years is a long time. So, 100 years is a long time and the population may be affected by wars and disease. Um, the model does not take this into account. So these are two valid reasons. This completes exam style question 2 and this teaching video 14.8 logarithms and nonlinear data. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.